to us. And they become ugly appendages. And because we didn't know any better, we believed them. And many of them have shaped our lives. And so today, the Lord, we want to talk about value. And so this is just our first. We want to talk about value. We want to confront the lie that says that you're worthless. We want to confront the lie that says you wouldn't amount to anything. We want to confront the lie that you're stupid, and you're ugly, and all those other things that people have said about us. So this morning you get sermon notes? Yeah. Amen? Okay. We're, we're just going to look at two scriptures today. And again, today is introductory. <laughs> next week we kind of break it out. We get into pieces. I can tell you next week. Uh, next week is we're just going to do one point. <laughs> just one point. <laughs> just, oh, just get ready. You know me. I'm like, they want one point next week. Today, because it's an overview, I'm going to be able to hopefully get through six. Because it's an overview and an introduction. But we're going to confront a lie today. And through this series, we're going to see, we're going to hear, and we're going to embrace what the Lord has to say about us. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, confronting a lie. Um, why don't you through Luke, and this is just a, 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 I'm kind of catching it in the middle of a, a pericope. I'm catching it in the middle of a story. I'm catching it in the middle. Um, stay true to the context, but just catching it kind of in the middle. Because there's other things there that I thought would take me another four weeks, so I can't do that today. So I'm going to zero in on, uh, again, introducing what we're going to talk about for the next few weeks. And so Jesus had been in a discussion with the Pharisees here and the teachings of the Pharisees, and he had been talking to his disciples. And in essence, Jesus starts off the chapter here, chapter 12, saying, in essence, Brown translation, you know, you better really watch and be concerned about those things that the Pharisees are saying. You need to really watch that stuff. And then he launches here. And it's interesting, and again, next week we're going to then hit on this, but let me just read it through. He says, I tell you, my friends, don't be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after killing the body has the power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Who is that? God, God alone. Very good, very good. And then after he says that, and the reason he talks about the fear and he tells them, calls them friends, is because he's trying to set them up and show them a new way. He's trying to show them what God really thinks about people and how valuable they are. And he calls them friends. And then as he moves from there, now he says, I'm going to tell you who you are, your friends. Then I'm going to tell you that, you know what? Don't worry about the Pharisees and what they have to say because they don't have power over your soul. Then I want you to understand something else. I'm going to talk about sparrows. I'm going to talk about insignificant birds. Just listen to it. And then he says, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Think about that. <laughs> For some of us, the number is going down every year. <laughs> the number's getting fewer. <laughs> you have to have the count so high. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered, which speaks to very intimate knowledge. Why in the world would someone want to know something so intimate and yet seemingly so insignificant about you if you were worthless, if you wouldn't amount to anything, if you were stupid? Don't be afraid. 
You are worth more than many sparrows. Our thing today, great things happen when people have an understanding about how valuable they are. When's the last time you've told, instead of having someone say something about you, when's the last time you've told someone how valuable they are to you? Just for a second, let's just, this is, this is kind of the pause. When's the last time you told someone that they're valuable to you? When's the last time that you told someone how much they mean to you? You know, a lot of times people complain about how people don't say this about me, but then we do the same thing to other people. Okay, that's your homework this afternoon. Go tell somebody how valuable they are to you. Amen. Okay. You need to share notes. Let's go to the next reading. Share notes. Okay, now all of your points, before you point to there's six of them, all your points, if you want to kind of read them literally, you would basically say, when people understand their value, then, okay, so you just know that. Okay, let's look at number one. When people understand their value, notice this, they will embrace the call to live up to it. They will embrace the call to live up to their value. When people understand how valuable they are, they will answer the call. I remember when I worked in aerospace and defense, and I told you about this man that I worked for. And he sought me out to work for him. And to work for him meant that they had to do something in personnel in order to put me in the position. He made sure they did whatever they had to do in order to get me in the position. Why? Because he wanted me to work for him. And I remember years later, and we were reflecting on this. And uh, by the way, I just want you to know, I got a letter from personnel because he told me to apply for the job. I got a letter from personnel that says that he's not qualified. So I had that letter. So anything ever happened, I could pull the letter off. Remember? I couldn't do that because remember, the personnel said I'm not qualified. Remember? He didn't care about the letter. So I asked him years later, about five, six years later, I asked him, I said, you know what? You had the opportunity to hire anybody. And anyone, especially a young guy like me, would have been absolutely overjoyed to take this position. Men with greater experience than me. Yet, you chose me, and I've done a few projects for you, but you chose, why did you choose me? This is what he said. And, it, and I remember it to this day, and it's always meant something to me, and I'll use it later on in the sermon. He said, I saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself. Because he saw something in me, it made me respond to the call of the assignment. Because he kept telling me how much I could versus my own mind saying I could not. He said, I saw something in you that you didn't see. Is it possible that God sees something in you that you do not? That God sees something in you that you have long denied. That God has tried to show it to you. And you can't keep telling God it's not there. I'll never be anything. Do you think that's God speaking to you? No. That's straight from the pit of hell. Look at our script. This is the same text. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill you. They can only kill the body. They can't do any more to you. Because you're valuable. Let's look at the first sub-point. Notice here. When people begin to see their value, they will live up. And therefore, destructive behavior will be avoided. They will say, I can't do this because it will hinder me from doing that. When people see how valuable they are, it decreases destructive behavior. Someone who's been in a drug and alcohol problem, when they are uh, program, when they finally get to the point of realizing that they are valuable before God, then that helps them. 
Why do you think NA and AA and they always want to have a higher power? Why? Because they want to see, want people to see that they're valuable. And that their lives do matter. Amen. And when we see that our lives matter, then destructive behaviors will be avoided. Next. They will pursue their dreams. When destructive behaviors are gone and you're moving and responding to the call of God, then you will dream. Not only will you dream, but you will pursue your dreams. There's a difference between everybody dreams, but not many people pursue their dreams. There's a big difference between what happens. It's nice to be a dreamer, Joseph. <clears throat> but unless you put some actions in those steps, a dream it's just a nice experience. One that you mostly forget about when you wake up. But when you see you have value, then you will dream a dream. And you will pursue your dream. Because you will respond to the call of those who say you have value. Next. The next, then it will lead to having higher personal expectations. Here is how many people move beyond the environment that they've grown up in. Some of us have grown up in horrible environments. Everybody say amen. amen. And it is in our hearts for many of us to absolutely change where we've come from to build a new future. The life that I live, I don't want for my children. Therefore, we build a new future for our children because we don't want them to experience what we did. Amen. You know how we do that? It's when we realize we can. It's when we realize that we have value before God. We have value to do something different. Number two, when people understand that they have value, they will walk in confidence and security. When people understand that they are valuable, that they have meaning, that their lives matter, that they matter, they will walk in confidence and security. I've interviewed many people for jobs. <laughs> Any of you have been in a job for a job interview in the last year or something? Job interview? Yeah. And so it's always interesting to walk, watch the candidate walk in. It tells you a whole lot. Those who walk in, you go like, okay, they're done right now. <laughs> really? Those who sit down and they're, you know, that. No. It's the ability to walk in in security and confidence and know that your God is working for you. Yes. I like the person who walks in, you know, confident, walks in the head, up hell, up high shoulders, back. Walk in there, give you the handshake. I got a handshake not too long ago. I'm going to say, brother, let go of my hand, man. Let go of my hand. This is not a date. Let go of my hand. <laughs> this is a greeting. <laughs> Give me my hand back. But when you know you're valuable, you will walk in security and you will walk in confidence. Look at that scripture. Jeremiah. God says, for I know I know. You don't know. He says, but I know the plans that I have for you. Everything that God is doing is for you. Notice. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and to give you hope. Walk in security and confidence because your God is at work for you, not against you. God is always trying to build you and take you to what he knows you can be. He says, for I know the plans that 
I have for you. Because if he, if God, what we, what we would love to do is God have like, you know, like a construction project. You know, he rolls out the scroll, rolls out the plans. And what we would love is for God to say, you know what, come on, come on. Come on, Dave, I'm going to walk you through this, man, come on. So here, Dave, Dave right here, you know, here, here, you know, that sign when you go to the mall, the kiosk, you know, you are here. That's what we want. We want a you are here. And then what we want is, okay, we want to, we, we definitely, you know, and even though we're trying to pay attention, you know, our eyes always creep to where we're going. No, 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 look at that. Okay, okay, Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. You lying. You did. You looked over there. You know you looked over there. What we want is God to give us a path. And here's what we want. We want this way. We don't want... That's not the path we want, right? Life is full of that. You understand that, right? Because when you look back, you think your life has been a total mess. God has straightened your road. God has helped you to get where you are right now. Your life is valuable. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've experienced, it's amazing how God can take what you've gone through and use it for his glory. Why? Because you have value. Even in your messed up, even in your messing up, God has given you value. And he will take your mess up and he will do something wonderful with it. Amen. Clear that up, please. Notice this. They will run toward opportunity. When you have security and confidence, you will run toward opportunity. You will not run away from it. Mm -hmm. When you know that you're valuable, you will run towards opportunity. Next, you will spend your time considering solutions. You won't spend your time with the pity parties. You won't spend the time in the woe is me's. You won't spend the time, they said I wouldn't be nothing. You won't spend your time there. Why? Because you realize that you are valuable and that God has a plan and that this little bump in the road can't make you fall down. Remember last week we talked about the blade of grass? Yeah. Our 240 pound fullback tripped over a blade of glass grass. We can't do that. But yet sometimes we do. Don't let a small incident, this incident that may be right in front of you today, don't let that knock you down. Move past it. Spend time considering solutions. Stop thinking about what has been. You can't do anything about it. All you can do something about it is here forward, not there backwards. God is not moving in your past. God is moving in your future. Your healing will be in front of you. Yes. Not behind you. Yes. We need to learn from what has been behind us and apply it as we move forward. Amen. Amen. Spend time thinking about solutions. Matter of fact, here's an indicator for you. If you spend most of your time thinking about, oh, woe is me and what I've done and how horrible the father I've been, how horrible the mother I've been, and how horrible a child I've been, if you're there, then you don't know your value. You don't know your value. Spend time with the solutions. Not where you've been. Next, they will live with a winner's, a win-win mindset. They will live knowing and expecting that their life will be positive. They will live knowing that God is the head of their life. And then with God, if God be for you, who can be against you? Number three, quick, number three. Number three. When people understand, when people get how valuable they are, they will reach for and achieve higher goals. When you know you're valuable, it will make you go harder. Okay. You, you just forgive me. Just say, Pastor, we forgive you. Some of y'all would look good about that. All right, let me, let me, let me. I'm going to use, use an analogy. I'm not saying, okay, let me approach this. 
How do you train a puppy? How do you train a puppy? Puff the calls, but I didn't call you a puppy. I was using an analogy. How do you train a puppy? What? Through positive reinforcement, right? That's what you do. When they do a behavior that you like, then you, 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 know, you celebrate the behavior that they want. And then it brings more, right? We had a cat. Cat name was Cedar. And you know, cats are, cats are something, you know. The dog, you get home, the dog almost knocks you over. How, how you doing? Glad to see you, man. I missed you all day, man. You're my mess. I just want to lick you, man. But, you know, you get home, the cat, you go to cat, the cat say, uh-huh. I'm going to be eating soon. My bowl full? What? You want me to purr? It's a cat. So we had a cat, though. Because I like cats. I don't know why. I just like cats. And so, you know, I... I, I I had no idea that our neighbors were growing four-legged critters next door. I didn't know that our neighbors were growing these things. But my cat did. Rats, y'all, just in case y'all know rat rats. Mice. Oh, that mice always sounds better. Do you have rats? No, I have mice. That sounds better. I have mice. So they have mice. No, they have rats. Anyway, so my cat because that's what they do. You know, they, they like. And so I remember my cat brought one home, you know, because it was like a reward, you know. She brought it home and she put it right in front of the garage door where she knew I would be coming out early in the morning. She brought it, she put it right there. And then she, she had it in her mouth and she dropped it. And I ain't say anything, so she picked it up again and uh, dropped it again. So I went over to her, you know, after she dropped it, and I pet her, see there, that is so good, she would just purr it. <laughs> Guess what? The next morning. <laughs> Two! <sighs> All right, back to talking about human beings. <laughs> How do you get people to do better? Thank you. By positive reinforcement, right? When you tell somebody how valuable they are to your ministry or to your life or to your marriage, they do more. It's just something about telling people to appreciate people and telling you, you're valuable, Bart. You're valuable, Dave. Ready? You're valuable, dear. We, we appreciate you. That means a whole lot to people. When people understand that they're valuable, they try harder. If you were to go to work tomorrow morning and your boss were to say, and you walk in and on your desk is some donuts or something and a big appreciation card, you would be lifted for the day and you would work harder. Amen? Amen. You would not take eight breaks. You'd only take four. But I mean, you know. <laughs> Right? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Why? Just because somebody says you're valuable. Just to get... You ever been in a real moment and somebody called you? Or somebody sent you a card? Just to say we're thinking about you, you're valuable. It lifts you. This is our scripture. Yeah. Okay. For I can do everything. This is the New Living Translation trans, uh, 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 version of Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength that I need. Yes. I can do everything through Christ that gives me the strength that I need. Oh, let's go to some point real quick. When people there's something you wanted to try and you wouldn't do it because you didn't feel valued. What if I get it right? Yeah, but what if I get it wrong? People who have little value fear getting it wrong because it adds to their devaluation of themselves. Next, they will get and they will stay free. Why? Because they have higher goals and higher objectives. Next. 
they will attempt bold things for God. Why? Because with God, there's no fear of failing. Even though sometimes I wonder if people, how people do stuff. <laughs> or if people do stuff. There's no fear of failing with God. Yes, they will live out on the heart of gratitude. Amen. It's something about being valuable and feeling valuable that makes you gracious and grateful. Yes. Number four, number four. They will make better decisions. When people feel valued, they will make better, more informed decisions. Look at that. Psalm 25, 12 says, Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path that they should choose. God always wants you to go on the right path. Amen? God always wants you to do that. Look at us up. They will protect their present and their future. Why? Because they make a better decision. Next. They will submit to God as their highest authority. If he knows the end from the beginning, if he knows the end from the beginning, why am I consulting anyone else? Think about that. He says he knows the end from the beginning. Why not consult him? We love Aunt Bertha. She's been in our life all that we know. But you're going to consult Aunt Bertha and not Jesus? I don't know your Aunt Bertha. I'm just saying that consult Jesus and you'll make the best decisions. Next, they will embrace the big picture. Because people who feel valuable, they can stretch and they can expand and they can get outside of their acorn-sized world. Number five. When people feel valuable, they will help others to see their value. When people feel valuable, when they feel valued, they will help others to see their value. They can't stand to see people who don't know who they really are. Look at our text. 2 Corinthians 1 4. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. When others are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. When we know that we are valued, then we can help others to see their value. Look at something. What happens is that they become resource people themselves. They take what they've gone through and they are willing to pass it on to others. People who can, people. You've heard all heard of the Dead Sea, right? Do you know that nothing lives in the Dead Sea? Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. Not only, its, it's salt content is, I think it is the saltiest body of water on the face of the earth. Salt Lake may be close. The reason it's called the Dead Sea is because water flows in, but it doesn't have an outlet. See, people who want to give life, people who receive life and are valued want to give life. It's just people who are dying themselves that cannot give something to someone else. Who are you a resource for? Who are you giving 
life to today. They take joy in pulling people and then pushing people up. Here's the caveat. They don't care if they push somebody above themselves. I want everyone to do better than me. Yes. Well, doesn't that bother you that people pass you? No! That says that I'm doing it right. Amen. Amen. Always tell my kids, I gotta do better than me. Do better than me. And I push them, I push them. Oh, dad, I push them, I push them. My leader's here, you know that's what I do. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Because <laughs> you need to do better. Because I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to give you. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, and I am perfectly willing to, to put you on my shoulders. You don't have to walk over me. I'm going to be too busy trying to put you up there. <laughs> so that you can then go do what you need to do. Amen? Amen. They take joy in pulling and pushing people. Next one. The sorties. Next. Thank you. Number six. Oh, sorry. I said two of those. Number six. Last one. So when people see their value, they become invigorated <coughs> or energized by the fact that others need them. When you have value, you understand that your value isn't just for you, but your value is for other people. The gifts of the Spirit, they're given not for you. They're given for the benefit of the church. You are the instrument, but the fruit of you being the instrument is for God's church. It's not about you. What you have is not for you. It's for other people. Notice, God always takes other people and then brings them to people so that he can help people. God brought Moses from somewhere else so that he might help his people in Egypt. God takes a person and he brings a person to people. So that they can add value to people. Who are you adding value to today? Okay, these go quick. Three points. Number one. <laughs> First of all, today, as you leave here today, I want you to know that how important you are. You are important to a whole group of people. Now, this is not a self-help session. You know, you know that, right? Amen? Yeah. Amen. We're helped by the Word of God. But what I want you to do is just put your hand on your heart. Just humor me just one second. I just want you to say very quickly, I'm important to somebody. And I don't care if anybody else doesn't tell you that. You are important to somebody. Yes. You are important to a bunch of people. You are important because you're part of a system. And that system works the way it does because you're in it. Well, you know, they'll find somebody else to replace me. Yeah, somebody else, but not you. Well, why do you say that? Because that's why God only made one of you. Why? Because you have a unique contribution. Why? Because you're you. Okay, I'm going to move on. More of that next week. Okay. And because you know you're important, then you won't and you can't sit still. You know, sometimes in churches you have people who are always doing things and people who really don't do a whole lot. And people who just sit. And the reason I think many people sit is because they don't seem to have value. They're comparing themselves to somebody else instead of comparing themselves to what God desires to do for them and through them for other people. 
They seem to not think and to know about their unique and valuable contribution. And so they sit. Why? Because they don't think they're important. Because they don't think that what they have is valuable. Anything that God gives you is valuable. Yeah. Lastly, they're not easily discouraged. They work tires, tireless, tirelessly. Why? Because they have something of value. And they know that they're important. And they know that other people need them. Now, they don't have a messianic complex. Let me explain that real quick. They're not the Messiah. They work for the Messiah. And the Messiah works through them. But they aren't the Messiah. Oh, we can't rest. We can't rest. Jesus rested. Matter of fact, Jesus told his disciples, come away. Let's get some rest. Jesus worked himself so hard one day in Mark 4, they got in a boat going on the other side of the lake, and Jesus went, he went to sleep. <laughs> and nobody said, well, they, you're valuable. You need to understand that. I don't care what anybody else has told you. You need to know you're valuable. And you know what? Your value is not diminished because now you're coming to the Lord at a later time in your life. Know that God is the one who can give fruit at a late time in your life. Amen? Amen. Sweet yeah. fruit. Precious fruit. Mm. Because God knows what he's doing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And Father, we love you today. and Thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are our hope and our strength. God, sometimes this subject is a hard one to talk about because people are all over the place with it. We do recall the voices of the past. And for some of us, God, that brings up a whole lot of pain. Not only does it bring up pain in what they've said, but God, sometimes it brings up the pain in what we've said. It brings our error to the surface. It brings how we've inflicted hurt to the surface for us. But Lord, we have this great, great resolution. You said you came not to condemn the world, but through you. But by you. Through what you're going to do that the world might be saved. So Father, I pray for those right now that are in that stink place. I pray for those, oh, Father, who cannot see value in themselves right now. God, I pray for those who are struggling, who can't find their way, who still can't seem to accept it. I pray for those, God, who are thinking about damages inflicted. Father, I pray that you would give them the grace and forgiveness so that they will know that they can do something from here on out. For all of us, Father. Continue through your word as we pray, as we seek your face to help us to see just how valuable we are before you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We love you. We thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. God bless you today. Thank you for being with us today. A lot of choices. You chose to be here with us. And we are blessed. Um, let's see. We we have